Hey guys, welcome to Manufacturing Unscripted. I'm your host, Lauren Rall. And I'm Matt. And today we have Tony Vernacy on. He is the president of the Aerospace Industry Association of Michigan. They're all about promoting aerospace here in Michigan, which is something I wasn't really familiar with. Yeah, totally. And they put on a show called the Aero One Show in which they give opportunities to manufacturers, mainly in Michigan, but all over the world to kind of come together to network and work on some pretty big industry issues. Um, And I think it's just a great opportunity for some of the smaller people in the industry to make a name for themselves. Yes, I totally agree. And Tony gives us a huge history of the aerospace in Michigan, which being born and raised here in Michigan was something I didn't know much about. So without further ado, enjoy the show. This podcast is sponsored by Promis Incorporated, the leading provider of fully electric servo presses for manufacturing. Promis provides global support for pressing and motion control applications in multiple industries. With precise positioning and in-process force monitoring, your company will begin to see ROI on day one. Call 810-229-9334 or email sales at promisinc.com to speak with an expert engineer about your application today. I, I guess the, the big thing that we wanted to bring you on is just kind of talk about what you're doing um, mm-hmm. within uh, Michigan and kind of how you're helping grow um, really the aerospace industry, right? And okay. get more people aware. So if you want to start a little bit about, I think you said that there's a good history of aerospace in Michigan. Um, to kind of, I don't know anything about it. <laughs> to uh, <laughs> maybe start with that, maybe a little bit about you and how you got into where you're at now, and then we'll just kind of go from there. Okay. So you just want me to open it up and or yeah, you do an intro or? Oh, we're rolling. The intro's already done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, good afternoon. It is it is a pleasure to sp- yeah. speak with you. A yeah. subject I love, I'm passionate about. Um, so my name is Tony Vernacy. I'm the president of the Aerospace Industry Association of Michigan. Mm-hmm. Uh, we formed this organization. I say we, myself and our board of directors, formed it about uh, a little over seven years ago. Uh, really out of um, recognition that we that we all saw that the aerospace industry was a big deal, um, huge industry in the state of Michigan, but it, uh, for some reason, is our best kept secret. Mm-hmm. And so we felt that um, it has tremendous growth potential, even though it's a big industry that's already here. And we wanted to, you know, shine the light on it and and really bring exposure. So it's not our best kept secret. And with all of the growth in the industry, um, even though it's big here today, it could be so much larger. And Michigan, we feel, is the best solution for the industry right now. Um, but it does have a great history, and I'm glad that you know you mentioned that, uh, Matt, because this this really this is not new. It's been in it's been in Michigan for over 80 years, and it kind of goes back to um, World War II. And at the time, there was a big need for industry to come to the table and help. Um, produce whatever they could to support the war effort. And and Henry Ford and his engineers came to the table because one of the things that was needed was there they needed more B-24 bombers, um, aircraft to be produced for the war. They were at that time um, being made in California um, by a company called Consolidated Aircraft and really built, you know, kind of like a Rolls Royce one at a time. And um, obviously with the war really, you know, going hot and heavy, they needed more production. And Henry Ford's engineers looked at it, came back and said, we think we can show you how to build this aircraft on an assembly line, which had never been done. Um, so, you know, they went to work, rolled up their sleeves, and that's that's that was the birthplace of Willow Run Airport and mm-hmm. Rosie the Riveter. Because, um, you know, a lot of the men were off, you know, at the war. And so there, I I forget the number now, but it was somewhere around probably 20 or 30 percent of the workforce then. I I could be wrong, but was was women um, because so many of the men were, you know, fighting the war. And and so they built Will Run. They built a three and a half million square foot facility, which at the time, I believe, was the largest manufacturing facility in the world. And, you know, today we talk about supply chain shortages. Well, they didn't have a supply chain. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't a shortage. It didn't exist um, for a lot of what they needed. So they had to produce a lot of their own materials 
in order to build this aircraft. So they started it um, in 1941. And in three and a half years, the airport was built, the factory was built, the supply chain was put in place, the workers were hired and trained, and, and they had produced 8,600 of these aircraft. That wow. was in three and a half years. They were hoping at the time, and I forget the number, somewhere around if we they could produce you know, one every couple hours. But by the end of the war, and just three and a half years later, they were producing one every 59 minutes. Wow. And so there's a lot of people believe, um, and I think it's a tagline still today out at Will Run, how Detroit saved the world. And uh, it was an amazing story. But in my view, when the war ended, the industry didn't stop. It kept on growing. And so fast forward to today, and, you know, we, by our data, we show there's about a thousand companies across the entire state of Michigan, including the Upper Peninsula, um, that are you know, involved in the global aerospace that's, industry. That's that's crazy. Just because, you know, we've been in Detroit area our whole life, right? So auto has just dominated the world's perspective of Michigan, right? Mm-hmm. We are the automate, automotive capital of the world with mm-hmm. with with what was the big three here for so long. So, um, yeah, I, I would never have told anyone that, you know, we are big in aerospace here. So (laughs) that's, that's, I wouldn't have known that either. And, um, just as like a, a a reference Mm -hmm. to that, I mean, promise here, aerospace is not our biggest industry. I mean, obviously automotive is because of where we're located outside Detroit And we want to grow our aerospace business, but it, it feels like unattainable. And I think that that's how we met you, you know, and I, you know, we're doing what we can to get involved, but just hearing those stats and like, there's so much around us. Um, we do need people like you bringing that awareness to us because we live here and we see it, but um, I didn't know that. And I'm in marketing. So it's like, <laughs> you know, I should have. <laughs> Well, you're not alone. Yeah. You're not alone. I mean, a lot of people don't. But just think if, if you know, us today talking, you know, live in the state and so many people like like you and, mm-hmm. and even me, you know, um, eight, seven, eight years ago, I didn't know it either. Yeah. Um, you know, didn't realize it. Then it's even less known outside of the state because as great as automotive has been to us, um, you know, it is obviously, you know, our background, you know, Detroit's the motor city. Everybody mm-hmm. knows that. You, you think you go anywhere in the world and say, what if you think of Michigan, what do you think <laughs> of? They're going to tell you Detroit and automotive. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if that's not known outside of our state, just think of the opportunity if people knew that because everybody needs talent. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we, we you know the state of Michigan has been is very successful at attracting new companies to the state. I always get worried because I'm thinking, well, you know, um, I hope they're if they're going to create 50 jobs. I hope they're bringing 50 people with them because, mm-hmm. um, you know, we we all need employees right now. Yeah. Um, so just think if if that was a better known fact, and Michigan is such a great place to live, work, and raise a family. How many people could we attract to the state that would help? address our talent shortage if they just knew the industry was here Mm -hmm. because people are leaving other states Mm -hmm. and and you you know we don't have to get political about it we don't have to mention any other states but we know people are leaving other states for um for a variety of reasons and just think those states um that that those people are exiting have got a you know really you know um full big aerospace industry so they're leaving and they're looking for their next aerospace opportunity. They should be thinking about Michigan, but they're not because they don't know it's here. And so that's really been our mission um, from yeah. day one: is bring attention, shine the light on this. Um, yeah. You know, let's have this no longer be our sleeping giant and our best kept secret. How did you become one of the many, or maybe a few, spokesmen of the aerospace <laughs> industry? How? Because you, like you mentioned, even seven years ago, like you weren't aware of all that was here. I said, what, what was your involvement? Like, how did you get involved in all this? Yeah, that's that's a good question. And I'll try <laughs> to give you a, as short an answer as possible. <laughs> but, um, you know, so I worked for 20 years for a company called Textron. Mm-hmm. Um, Textron is a U.S. conglomerate. That's their, their headquarters in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, but one of the Textron businesses or part, you know, is, is 
is a Cessna aircraft, mm -hmm. Bell helicopter, and Textron Systems, which is a defense business. And Textron um, had a lot of assets in the state of Michigan, not aerospace related. A lot of it was other industries, particularly automotive. But I worked for Textron for almost 20 years. And that's where I personally fell in love with the aerospace industry because I got to know th those Textron companies. And so it's a great company. They make a great product. Um, but eventually, you know, they were going to want me to move outside of the state. And it's just not something that I was wanting to do because mm -hmm. I love Michigan. Yep. <laughs> um, and so... You know, I left Textron in um, in 2011, worked for a company in England for a year just doing a project. I didn't move there. Mm -hmm. I just did some work and traveled a lot. But eventually when that project was over, I went to work for the state of Michigan um, doing business development for the state of Michigan and leading a team that would wake up every day to say, what's the next company we're going to attract and bring to Michigan? Mm -hmm. And so when I went to work there, I just said, okay, you know, what are the industries that we're targeting? And obviously automotive is on the list, mm -hmm. but, and there were a lot of things on the list, all very legitimate, but aerospace wasn't even on the list. And that just started some questions. Well, why not? Um, if a company is making a bracket for a car, they could be making a bracket for an airplane. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's oversimplifying it, but, it, but it's true. Yeah. And so um, we started working on putting together a list because the state didn't really even know. Um, and in fairness to the state, a lot of companies, just imagine your company, um, you get into aerospace, you know, it might it might end up being 5% of your business, but you're not going to classify as an aerospace company. So it's hard to see, it's hard to figure out. Um, so we started doing some work and really digging into the data. At the time, we found there was about four or 500 companies. Governor Snyder was in office at the time. So this kind of caught his attention. Um, he started to get real interested in it. And you know, one day I just had a conversation with him and just said, listen, um, this is a big industry in the state of Michigan. It's a huge growth industry. There's no end in sight, literally no end in sight. And it's an underserved industry in the state. And so I described what what an association would do and the purpose and the value. And it was Governor Snyder that actually encouraged me to go start it. He said, that sounds like a great idea. Why don't you go start it? And so I left this my job at the state. I had only been there about two years um, and, you know, just kind of rounded up a board of directors, you know, that, OK, if it's going to if it's going to be real, it's, it can't be led by me. It needs to be led by the industry. And so we were so fortunate. Um, nobody nobody said no. I mean, we went to big companies like GE and Pratt Whitney and Eaton and Woodward, you know, mm -hmm. companies all over the state. Um, all said, yeah, count us in. We want to be part of this. And so we sat down and rolled up our sleeves and uh, went to work forming the organization and what it should do and the value proposition. And um, so that I so I left the MEDC in May of 2017, formed the organization, recruited the board. In August, we had our first board meeting. Um, and everybody from that meeting, you know, was like, yeah, let's do it. And um, we went to work, like I said. And that by the end of that year, we said, all right, we're ready to open for business. Let's see if we can get some members. Mm -hmm. We just started signing companies up. And today we've got almost 150 um, companies and our database has grown. We just keep chipping away at it. And we today we know there's about a thousand companies, like I said, um, even almost three dozen of them up in the UP, which are amazing companies. And mm -hmm. it's it's all over the state. So in terms of you and the board and like what your focus is, is what like what techniques and um, strategies are you using to kind of help push aerospace more into the limelight and just the manufacturing of it just forward? Yeah. So when we when we set up the organization, um, we formed what we call the three pillars um, and, and said, OK, how how are we going to be able to be? Um, provide value and be meaningful to the business community in Michigan. And those three pillars are networking. So providing opportunities for companies to, you know, get together. We call it connect, learn and grow, make connections, learn about the industry and grow their business, get into the industry. Um, the other piece of that is um, advocacy. So as, as we all know, being Michiganders, we know our state um, is great at automotive that's a lot of their conversation is automotive. So we, from day one, 
knew we needed a voice in Lansing. So we hired McCallie Merchant as our lobbyist to be um, uh, in, you know, our voice in Lansing. And, and we've got term limits. So, you know, you're just constantly um, getting, you know, new legislators on the job and, and we're educating and informing them. We hold a legislative day where we take companies to Lansing for the day. We have meetings um, throughout the day. Well, we probably have 20 to 30 meetings that day with our members and legislators. We set up exhibits in the Capitol, buy 300 lunches and invite the, exhibit, the uh, legislators and their staff to come and meet the companies and have a conversation. Um, so the legislative piece is big. And then um, talent and education. It, you know, we we need to, um, you know, get more students uh, interest aware of the industry and knowing that there's multiple opportunities um, that they may not even have thought of um, that are possible. There's there's companies in Michigan that are doing work for SpaceX, NASA, um, you name it um, from Michigan, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so you don't have to. You don't have to be a pilot, but you can. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you don't have to be an astronaut, but you can. Um, and you can do all that and live and work in Michigan. Do you have your pilot license? I do. You actually. do? Oh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. What, what, yeah. Do you, what do you fly? Um, well, I don't. I'm not active. You okay. know, you unless you get in trouble, you never lose your license. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I have my pilot's license. I'm not current. Okay. Um, you know, I I flew a, a Cessna 172. Okay. Um, no I idea what that Pontiac is. Oakland Airport. Those those and, smaller, uh, smaller. I used to um, live right across the street from that airport. Oh no, kidding. <laughs> yeah. Well, in Waterford. I was, yeah. I was a, well, part of the annoying noise that would fly fly over your house occasionally. Yeah, get used uh, to it. <laughs> but no, I fell in love with it. My wife, um, this is when I was still at Textron, actually, because mm -hmm. I just I just fell in love with the industry. And um, for Father's Day, she gave me an, ex an uh, what they call a discovery flight yep. where you get to go up. Fine. And I came home. She said, well, how was it? I said, well, I signed up. I'm taking lessons start next week <laughs> and, <laughs> and, um, and got my license. And it was a lot of fun. But, you know, to be safe, um, you have to fly frequently. Mm -hmm. um, I just wasn't able to fly um, enough. I mean, I had my license. I could rent a plane, go anywhere I wanted, which I did sometimes. Um, but I just didn't want to keep up with it, and I wanted to be safe. So I, I haven't flown for a few years. That's such like a a hobby that I forget that people like have, right? That yeah, I have. You know, what's your hobby? Oh, I I fly planes. Like it's an expensive <laughs> like, hobby. I would assume it's such a crazy thing that I forget that that's doable, right? That yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and no, you're right. And, yeah. and Lauren, you're spot on. I always tell people, <laughs> you know, to fly, um, you know, it's expensive. It's, so it takes money and it takes time. Mm -hmm. And usually in our life, those things never line up together, mm -hmm. right? When no. you've got time, you don't have any money. I and know. you got a little bit of money, you're too busy. So, mm -hmm. um, and that, you know, and I didn't really have a lot of either one, but I had just enough to, and I never told my, my wife even told me about a week ago. She said, you know, I don't really know how much you spent on flying. I said, yeah, let's just hope you're we like, keep just it say You started so, it. You started it. Yeah. Yeah. That's just her fault. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. No, that's great. Uh, I, I would love to learn how to fly, but I don't. You could get a simulator, Matthew. You could do the flight simulator. It's the same. <laughs> I just feel like it's, it's the same, like, I don't want to say that it's, Apples to apples, but like I have my motorcycle endorsement and I was telling Lauren the other day, like she's, cause I, I don't have my motorcycle anymore, but I keep my endorsement just like, yep. you know, I don't, I'm out of practice for sure. But, um, there's just something about, you know, being on the motorcycle that's different yep. and it's hard to explain yep. until you experience it, you know, <laughs> firsthand. And I imagine flying a plane is very similar to that feeling. Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, like I say, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, I started taking, you know, I, I've, I'm a VFR pilot, which means um, visual flight rules. So mm -hmm. you can't fly in the clouds, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, you always have to have your, everything has to be within your, within your view. Mm -hmm. um, I started taking my instrument rating, which means you, you can fly in the clouds, which was an unbelievable experience. Um, you know, you take off, um, you know, low overcast day, 
it's like flying in a glass of milk. You just you can't see anything. <laughs> um, you're flying completely off your instruments. <laughs> well, what a visual! Control. Flying in a glass of milk. I instantly knew what you were talking about. Wow. Yeah, that's you just look out and it's all white. Yeah. And 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 so you're you know you're talking to air traffic control and they're giving you you know all your altitudes and your course mm-hmm. and where you're supposed mm-hmm. to be and you come in for a landing and you're you're coming down coming down and boom there's a runway appears mm-hmm. right right in front of your eyes. Um, it's it's great, but it's, you know, it's another skill level takes a lot of time. And I just knew I was never going to be able to put the time in to be, um, be, you know, safe with that. Yeah, Um, for sure. Let's talk a little bit about the arrow one show that you, Mm -hmm. that you do and what you're doing there to kind of help people within the industry kind of grow and get opportunities. Yeah. So that was our vision before COVID we, you know, cause we had started doing some events um, and they were all really well attended. People got a lot out of them and, and we enjoyed them. Um, but we said, hey, you know what? Let's have a full up conference, an aerospace conference, making an annual event in Michigan. Um, so it's not just about Michigan's industry, although there's a lot of things going on at the conference that are tied to Michigan. Um, but, what you know, again, this was part of our mission to bring the attention to the industry here in the state. And so we said, all right, we wanna have a conference. We wanna talk about the global aerospace industry. We wanna do it in Michigan. And we wanna draw, draw as many people in from outside of the state as possible. We wanna bring them here. We want them to learn about, you know, even though it's a global conference, we're gonna give them a little slow drip about what's going on in Michigan so we can build up that awareness for the industry here. And when we get them here, we want them to have a good experience because we don't know where they're going to come from. And they may have a perception of what they think Michigan is. We want to change that. And so the first year we did it in 2022 at the JW Marriott in downtown Grand Rapids. Grand Rapids, you know, you can't beat Grand Rapids. It's such a great place. Mm -hmm. And we thought, okay, first week of September, beautiful weather. Grand Rapids, um, gosh, if we could get 150 people there for a couple of days, that'd be that'd be great. Um, and much to our surprise, we had almost 300 people show up. Um, we maxed out the JW Marriott the first year. Uh, we had companies from 25 different states and and five or six different countries came to it. And and we just said, okay, we might have gone to something mm-hmm. here. And and we wanted to grow it. Um, we couldn't grow it at the JW. Um, the other facility in in Grand Rapids that could have handled it was already booked. So last year we moved it to downtown Detroit, and we said, okay, let's put it at the Renaissance Center. Um, let's show off Detroit. And 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 I I'll go back. The people that came that first year, um, even people from the state of Michigan hadn't been to Grand Rapids in 15 years or longer. Um, they were blown away. They said, what a great city. Um, and then some people from outside the state had never heard of Grand Rapids. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so, again, it was just it just totally amazed them. So last year we said, let's show off Detroit. Let's go to the Renaissance Center. And we rented out the 72nd floor, the top of the Renaissance Center. We had a, our welcome reception that night, which is a spectacular view mm-hmm. of the city, you know, Canada, and people were talking to themselves. Um, a lot of people said they had never been to Detroit. They hadn't been here in 30 years. Um, you know, it, it really, Detroit showed itself off well. Um, and then now this is coming up on our third year. Uh, we're holding it in downtown Rochester. Again, it's a nice walkable community. Oh, yeah. Uh, we want people to experience parts of Michigan. We're going to we're going to give them a lot of information. We're going to give them an opportunity to meet tons of people in the industry. Um, But again, we want them to have a good experience because we're showing off the state. And so um, the the industry is really focused. I mean, we've got a lot of big players. We've got um, air. We've had Airbus, Boeing, Lockheed Martin, um, GE Aerospace, Pratt Whitney. I mean, we've got almost 50 speakers. Um, It's two and a half days. And it's, it's, you know, there's so many ways for people to network and connect. And, um, and I, I believe you told me this is the event, right, where s- some companies have the opportunity to bring an issue and mm-hmm. you kind of give the the group, right, you split into smaller groups and then you give the group an opportunity to pitch ideas, right? And what yeah. I really loved about this idea is 
there are companies that are probably attending this that might not get noticed by the bigger companies because mm-hmm. they're just small and they just don't, they overlook them or they don't even know of them, mm-hmm. right? Yep. And so yep. what you're doing is giving kind of a, a platform for a lot of these manufacturing companies in Michigan or outside of Michigan. Um, yep. I'm assuming you probably have a heavy audience from Michigan at these. Of course. Um, mm-hmm. An opportunity to to get uh, a spot in front of the, some of the big names. In, That's right. And really, really, you know, potentially help their business grow exponentially, you know, because it yeah. just takes one good pitch for them to like, where are you from? Like, you know, what, what company do you work for that you guys came up with this idea? And, you know, and that's, all, that's all it is. So I think that's a really, really cool opportunity that you give at this show. Yeah. Well, thanks for recognizing that. And you explained mm-hmm. it so well, we should have, we should do, um, <laughs> have you on a, on a radio commercial. Um, you don't need to um, inflate his ego anymore. <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> yeah. You talk to my producer. She's right there. No. <laughs> <laughs> He's not for hire. <laughs> no, but you're right. Um, you know, we were, we introduced it last year. We didn't have it in the first year. Um, we introduced it last year and said, let's do something different. Um, You know, there's different things like, you know, speed dating or B2B Mm -hmm. meetings. They're not uncommon, um, but we want to do something different. And we said when we came up with this idea of the round, we call it the round table. Mm -hmm. And so this year, the three big companies are uh, is Airbus is one, Mm -hmm. uh, GE Aerospace and Liebherr Aerospace. Mm -hmm. And so each of them have brought a unique and they're different. They're different from each other problem that they're experiencing today. And there's room for 20 companies to sign up to be in with GE, 20 with Airbus, and 20 with Liebherr. And so you're right. They get into the room, and we you know, we split them into small groups, and they brainstorm. But the other really big piece of this is the, the idea that they pitch to the front of the room, to the big company, mm-hmm. you know, it may or may not happen. Right. Um, but they're, they're in a room with 19 other companies collaborating together. Mm-hmm. And we we do this the very first morning of the conference, and then that night there's a reception. And just imagine you say, "Hey, you know, Lauren, I saw you. I heard you. What you said at the roundtable this morning was really interesting. Tell me more about that." Mm-hmm. Um, so the collaboration. I mean, there's 60 companies. Most of them haven't ever met, mm-hmm. and they're together collaborating, brainstorming, networking, and and it was just incredible. Um, yeah. Pre- Brett Whitney actually today still has five or six companies um, working in their Lansing facility, implementing the s- solution that was suggested last year at the conference. Yeah, and you're so, right. It It is such a good opportunity for um, different integrators or builders or whatever you call them in, in the industry, but to collaborate together. Because I, I know even at Promise, like there's other companies that we've collaborated with on an application. And sometimes... Mm-hmm. You know, you don't have time to do that research and figure it out for your customer. You know, you don't have time, but these types of connections are always nice to have. So you're like, hey, we don't make these uh, beta plugs, for instance, from the Lee company, right? We Mm -hmm. partnered with them to press these beta plugs together and create a really great application for our customer. But Mm -hmm. if you don't know these people, it's hard to get in the door or hard to find that right person to talk to. So you're right. I think a roundtable like this, not only is it good for that that big wig customer, it's also good for these integrators to kind of work together. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Yeah. Networking, like you said, is part of your pillar. It's it's perfect, perfect uh, vessel to kind of, you know, enforce that. Yeah. 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 And we're, and this year the conference is really geared, you know, towards um, building relationships, you know, that will last. And so many of the companies that attend an event like this, when Boeing or Airbus speaks and they step off the stage, everybody's trying to slip their business card in that person's (laughs) pocket, you know, and hope that they'll call them. Um, In some ways you don't want them to call you, you know, because um, those big companies, it's a challenge. Um, Mm -hmm. Um, and so you, you'll say, be careful what you wish for. Well, but what we're yeah. saying is they all have tier one, tier two, tier three suppliers. Mm-hmm. Um, there's so much opportunity in the tier levels of the industry. And there's so much growth. We're just telling people, listen, 
you know, you're crawling over the top of a tier two company that you yeah. could be doing work for, mm-hmm. uh, or that could be doing work for you thinking you need to climb the mountaintop to get to Boeing and Airbus. Yeah. An order is and, an order. Yeah. And you're missing the opportunity. You're right. missing it right there. So that's really our focus this year is to help people understand the value of those relationships mm-hmm. and the opportunity at the tier level in the supply chain. No, I think that event's super cool. And I, I do want to draw attention to another thing that we discussed. And I think it was actually you were pitching this, and that's how we met you at an event. And that was women in <laughs> the aerospace industry and how what you're doing to kind of grow that. Yeah. Um so I can't take a lot of credit for it <laughs> because because they are they you know it's a group of professional ladies from our yeah. member companies, um, you know like a lot of industries, um, you know women in the industry are underrepresented, um, and young ladies going through their educational journey um, aren't being um, presented the opportunity or suggested that they ought to consider it, and so we formed the organization called the Women of AIAM, which is our acronym. Um, and, and it's really geared towards advocating for women in the industry. One of the events, actually, they just started announcing it. It'll be the third year they've done it. But it's it's the Michigan Girls Future Flight Challenge, and it's for fourth through eighth grade girls. And so they're given a problem, um, and they have to come up with a flight solution to solve that problem. Like, think of, okay, Detecting forest fires was one, um, you know, picking up trash out of the ocean, you know, was one as not. And, and so they had to think of what would a flight solution look like? And they they're given mentors to contact. It's all virtual. It's statewide. Um, and, and they're given mentors. They have to contact for manufacturing, engineering, sales and marketing. And there's a fourth one I'm not thinking of right now. Um, so it runs for a month. They work in a team. And then they have to build a model. Um, nothing, you know, dramatic. I mean, it has to be uh, something they have at home, mm-hmm. milk carton, egg carton, foil, whatever. And they have to present it to a panel of judges. I do get to do that. Mm-hmm. That's um, fine. You know, and and it is such a good experience to listen to these young ladies, you know, and I mean, they're, you know, fourth, fifth, you know, fourth through, you know, sixth grade. Mm-hmm. And they're, you know, you see their eyes light up and they're all excited and and so it's it's great, you know, because they learned a lot. They had no idea, and they're competing for real money. Um, the first place team wins a thousand dollars that they're splitting Aww. between them in Barnes and Noble's gift cards. Mm-hmm. Um, and two years in a row, we've had um, teams from the Upper Peninsula. Um, I think one year they won first place, and last year they came in second or third. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it's a it's a great great program. That's really cool. No, it's cool. It's really cool what you guys are doing for minority groups, you know, the the students and the women of the industry. I mean, not to mention aerospace feels like a minority in, in Michigan in some ways, you know, like it's a feels like it's like a new thing or a smaller group. But but I think you're bringing awareness and showing that it's really not. And there's a lot of opportunity there, which, you know, is what we're all looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there yeah, is. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so I was going to say, um, we're kind of getting towards the tail end of our, our recording here. Um, I want to give you an opportunity to speak about anything um, that you would like to mention while I have you on here um, that maybe we weren't able to touch on. Sure. You know, um, the one thing I will say is we've learned a lot in seven years. I mean, we we started in 2017 and we have learned so much along the way. One of the things that we recognize is while the, being a member is great and that we feel really good about the three pillars, we've ident- we've recognized there's so much more we can do to make an impact. And so in January of 2023, we um, set up a charitable foundation. Um, and the foundation's mission is geared towards talent, um, helping young people um, throughout the state in underserved and rural communities to bring an awareness um, to those individuals about what the um, industry offers and um, and help get them, you know, a path into the industry and, and, and also companies because the industry has got so much growth and it, it really is, it's, it's off the charts like it's never seen before and it's desperate for suppliers. Um, so we wanna help again, 
um, companies that are owned by a protected class. So um, women owned, um, African American, Native American, um, small business, you know, also in underserved and rural communities, um, you know, to learn about what it takes to be a supplier in the industry. Um, so we're actually at the conference this year, we're going to be showcasing one of our newest programs. It's called Drone Soccer. Um, we actually invested um, and have purchased a drone soccer arena. What? Um, so it's kind of like a cross between um, basketball and bumper cars. Oh, um, it's cool. a 10, 10 cool. by 20 netted arena. Mm -hmm. um, kids, students, um, they're, they're flying drones um, inside of this arena and they're playing offense and defense, mm -hmm. trying to score goals in each other's um, net. But it's got a real connection to STEM, you know, mm -hmm. and and so we we made the investment. Um, we're going to use this to promote drone soccer. We have a vision for taking this across the state and making mm -hmm. it available in schools all over the state. That's um, fun. To help students get inspired. No, that's that's great. I think everything you're doing is is fantastic. Um, I mean, from what you just mentioned to helping. Uh, manufacturers in the aerospace industry and obviously not just in Michigan, like you said, get opportunities to network, to, to, to make connections. Um, I mean, it, it's great. I think when industries have an advocate like yourself. So, well, thank you. Um, so, uh, so I just want to say, you know, thank you for being on the show. Everything you said was fantastic. Um, and, uh, we, we, we appreciate it. Um, we learned a lot. I mean, I lived in yeah. Michigan for 33 <laughs> years and I didn't know how big aerospace was. So, yeah, um, agree. So that's fantastic. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. And yeah. thank you, everybody, for listening. Um, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. And if you want, you can go follow along with Tony. Um, until next time. Until next time. Goodbye. Bye. This podcast is brought to you by Promise Incorporated. Hosted by Matthew Rawl, mixed and edited by Ben Parsons, and produced by myself, Lauren Rawl. If you have any questions or would like to be on the podcast, please reach out to podcast at promiseinc.com.